I have so many videos I filmed but just haven't completed editing on, but this one I have. This is a GPS, an affordable GPS, a bike tracker. Talk about that in an upcoming video. Today's video is kind of a quick make video because I've had so many questions. I had one person yesterday ask me about the same thing others have been asking about, and it has to do with rear hub motor e-bikes and a cadence sensor, and in this case, you can actually see the cadence sensor, see the magnets on it right there. That's the cadence sensor. Normally, they're a very small unit over on the other side, but every now and then, you'll see these exposed cadence sensors. And what this cadence sensor does, is senses that the pedals are moving, and it cuts the motor on, and more importantly, cuts the motor off when pedaling is stopped. I don't know how well you can hear this, but let's see. See, one revolution, and it just bumps. That motor turns on and then back off almost instantly, milliseconds or within a half a second. But there are some e-bikes or even some situations on an e-bike that even has good latency like this one, a quick shut off. Sometimes that half a second will turn into a couple of seconds. But I want you to think about something here. If you're going down the road, some e-bikes will do 28 miles per hour. I have many that will. This one will only do about 16. But at 28 miles per hour, two seconds of boost, that's 102 feet of oomph, of forward momentum that you didn't plan for. So you can see where that could create potential issues. The question is, how do you stop that? Again, this bike's pretty good. It's actually really good but even on this one every now and then i mean it's kind of a thing if it has a cadence sensor and a rear hub motor every now and then you're just going to have that prolonged boost that's unexplainable i actually think there is an explanation i think it's the programming of the speed controller and maybe a little anticipation that is programmed in there that if there's an extended cadence that it will assume that if cadence is slowed or stopped, that it should maybe keep on for a little longer before it tapers off or before it shuts off, just to keep the ride smoother. But that can create issues, it can create problems, especially if you're riding off-road or even, even around town. And novice riders, if you just got an e-bike or you're getting one for Christmas, a big deal. If they, I, See, right there, it's kind of a second instead of a half a second right there. It's every now and there. Just a weird thing and it happens on pretty much every cadence sensor hub drive motor e-bike so the speed controller i think possibly one reason but another reason i'm gonna talk about this pedal positioning those magnets there are a set number of magnets with spacing around there i think there's 12 on this one and there's spacing on those magnets and it's sensing a specific point so it will know how far and how long this pedal has been rotated or this crank arm has been rotated to turn the motor off and on. I'm a mountain biker, so I tend to stop my pedals low. I, well, actually, I tend to stop mine about just a little bit canted. I'm kind of at a slight angle, but most of mountain bikers will try to stop level. If we're going into a turn, one side we might drop, drop the other. But for the most part, we try to stop and sit level. I think a lot of people, especially new riders with e-bikes that are experiencing excessive power output that they didn't plan for, or it not cutting off fast, I think that is because they might stop and then move the pedals again. Because I've got this going. And I stop for a second, but then I move, see, only a quarter of a turn. And this takes almost a full turn, a half turn. Yeah, a half turn. This takes a half turn to engage. But you see, once I get it going, I stop. And then do only a quarter. That was less than a quarter of a turn. That motor turns back on. I think that could be some of it. And also, people not consistently stopping at the same point. So they'll stop and then quickly try to even out or get their favorite foot to their favorite side. A lot of people call it the lazy leg where you'll ride with one foot down, whether it be the left or the right. 
think maybe they're going and then they stop and then, oh, hold that foot down. And you get that extra burst. So it's actually not a prolonged burst in many cases. It just feels like it because it cuts off and then cuts back on so fast. That's good programming, really. Turning off and on fast. It's just the way e-bikes work. Something to think about if you're new with e-bikes and you have an e-bike with a cadence sensor. If you have any question as to whether your bike has a cadence sensor or not, you can look. If you see that, it has one. Or if you see this, it has one. Or if you're really confused, just send me a message down in comments and ask. I'll let you know if your bike has a cadence sensor or not. Some have a torque sensor. That's a whole different conversation and doesn't have the motor lag like a cadence sensor bike does. Anyway, if you're new with e-bikes, I thought this might help you out. So many new people getting e-bikes, so many new e-bikes about to come out, coming out daily now. There you go. If you're new to e-bikes, something to watch out for, something to learn. Know your bike. The more you know your bike, the more safe you will be on it, the more fun you're going to have. And there's a lot of fun to be had with these motors. I probably should have picked a louder one for this. This is what I had access to. It's my little RV park hopper here recently. I did a review on this. It's called the Z1. I don't even think they, I don't think they make them anymore. This little bike was something else. Even had brake lights. How about that? And a cruise control. This bike has a cruise control. But it's a hub, rear hub motor cadence sensor based e-bike even this one one of the good programming's quick on quick off but you can have bursts but sometimes those bursts are caused by the rider's pedal actions that they're just not thinking about i hope that helped you out if it did drop a comment below if i don't see you between now and christmas i hope you have a merry christmas or if you see this after christmas i hope it was awesome and you got an e-bike or got all kinds of good stuff Stay tuned for this. This is a GPS and affordable one. You know, they can tend to be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And then the service to keep them going is usually crazy. This one affordable and usable. And a couple of little unique things I need to mention, like instructions mounting on a seat post. We'll talk about that. Comment below with your thoughts on e-bikes. How about latency on these hub motor drives? All that if you experience it. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day. Before I get to the bike that I'm looking at in this video, I want you to give me just a moment of your time. And stick with me, because believe me, this isn't the average e-bike, and this one has plenty of surprises. Also, it's worth mentioning that you know I don't accept paid reviews. I don't allow scripting or any control over my review process or really even special requests. As a matter of fact, I really don't speak to bike companies much between receiving a review bike and publishing my review. This time, however, Unero contacted me. They wanted to send another bike, and that was before I'd even published the review on their last bike. This one had a request attached, and that was I review it before Christmas. But, you know, this is close to Christmas, so I'm thinking maybe they're hoping that people do those kind of presents where you open a box and there's a picture of something inside that's on the way. But that was Monday afternoon, late Wednesday evening, the bike arrived. Now, I didn't even know what bike I was getting, but after opening it, I'm willing to bet that many of you are going to have the same reactions I had, the same gamut of emotions. At first, antipathy, followed by intrigue, eventually culminating in surprise and joy. So let's jump right in with the antipathy phase, because it looks like the design influence for this bike may have been a praying mantis. That, or an engineer designed it with little concern for aesthetics. A funny thing though, regular viewers are going to know that I have a weakness for odd looking bikes, so it didn't take long for this look, this elongated pill on wheels, to make me curious. But can that curiosity overcome things like a folding bike headset on a non-folding bike? Well, it turns out that has a reason, and there are many things about this bike that have reasons and also a lot of features. So I'm going to go over them component by component, and stick with me because I promise you it's worth the look. 
Right away, I noticed the leather-like stitched comfort grips. Interesting considering the price of this bike, which I'll get to, but other bikes, even for Munero, that cost almost twice as much have rubber grips. So I appreciate the comfortable leather-like feel. There's a one-half grip on the right to accommodate the twist throttle. I love a twist throttle on an e-bike, so this is right up my alley. Below the twist throttle, a red button, and this is usually a horn, but this one, not a horn. Now comment below if you think you know what this is, and don't cheat, be honest, and we'll find out in a minute. Like many sub $1,000 e-bikes, the shifter is a Shimano Mickey Mouse shifter. I actually use this one, and as you can see, this is a six-speed bike. Beside that, a bell, which is nice for politely clearing people out of the way. The computer, I have no idea what model this is, but it's a no frills LCD computer and it doesn't flicker in person, so note that, but I would like to know what this says in Chinese if anyone can translate. It's one downside is it displays kilometers per hour only, so I don't like that part, but the function is straightforward and basic. It cycles through the three pedal assist modes and there's a zero at the bottom. That's a trip meter which resets to zero on power cycle. A long press of the function button switches it to odometer. When on, pressing the power button again turns on the bike's lights. But I found out that even when the computer's off, if you quickly press it, it'll turn the running lights on while pressed. How about some Morse code? And these running lights, they're brighter in person, which makes them cool, but the headlight, actually usable at night and plenty visible during daytime. Before we look at the tail light, I want to mention that in my previous Unirow bike reviews, I mentioned they had a lack of a power cutoff switch on the brakes. Yet, on this bike, costing less than the others, check it out. Power cutoffs. We'll come back to those, but first the tail light. These don't flash in person, and the rear has running lights, just like the front, but in red. But turn on the headlights, and it activates the center tail light. But squeeze the brake lever, and bam! Brake lights. This is the first bike I've ridden that has integrated factory brake lights, and I'm super impressed. Back to the levers, because I'm sure the brakes are activated by the power cutoff, but they're not the reason for the power cutoff. The real reason? Hiding in plain sight, and if you haven't figured it out yet, don't worry, we're getting closer. 600 millimeters for the width of the bars, which is slightly wider than most folding e-bikes, and the beanstalk, it has a curve to it, which makes it look even more odd. Dual safeties on the folding mechanism, which allows the bars to lay over onto the side, which didn't make sense until I had it next to a folding e-bike, and with the seat down or removed entirely like this case, it actually takes up less room than a folding e-bike. And that's because it's low and skinny, and as someone pointed out, it could be hid under a table at their work or slid behind their couch at their apartment. The fork, like the frame and most of the bike's components, alloy, and it sweeps forward and the two arms are two thin blades. And the front wheel, it features a quick release, the hub's modus. Wheels, 20 inch double wall alloy rims with Kenda Contact 20 by 1.95 street tires. Both wheels are wrapped with fenders, aluminum, front and rear. And fortunately, they're factory installed, which saves me from making donations to the swear jar. Folding handlebars, but no folding pedals. These are plastic flats, lightweight, and we'll see how they hold up. The alloy crank arms are 170 millimeters, and the entire crank sets. Pro wheel with a single 44 tooth chainring. And sandwiched in there is a magnet disc cadence sensor. To go along with this unique frame style, how about this? An elevated bottom bracket, it's on top of this bottom pill frame bit looking thing. The rest of the drivetrain components, Shimano, like this torny TZ derailleur, six speed, and it has a red jockey wheel, and that kind of matches the frame on this red Z1. The six speed free wheel, a Shimano 14 to 28 tooth. And the rear hub motor. 36 volt, 250 watt, but don't balk just yet. It is tiny, but it does perform better than I expected, as you'll see. It gets its power from this, a very interesting looking battery box, and the battery itself, it's the white part. The black housing is where the speed controller resides, and the battery itself, 36 volt, 6.6 .6 amp hour, which makes it the lowest I've seen in an e-bike. I'm curious what the range is gonna be. Unero's website says 20 miles. On the bottom of the battery, there's a USB port, a charge port, and a button to illuminate the onboard charge indicator lights. There's also a keyed lock, but initially I couldn't find anything that it does, but more on that coming. All these surprises, they're going to start stacking up. Behind the battery and coming off the seat tube are supports leading to the rear rack, which on this bike was blessed by UPS with contours. But even bent, it feels sturdy, though I don't know the weight limit. But speaking of UPS, I'm amazed that everything made it with this bike. It was well packed, but UPS left it with rips and holes on both sides and even on the top. 
but at least the rear reflector's protective film made it through. Below the reflector, a tag mount. Let's talk about the frame, this elongated pill style frame, which is 6061 aluminum and it's made up of a long top tube and a smaller lower section with everything else just sort of sandwiched in between. The Z1 comes in three colors, red, black, and white, and of course this is the red and the finish looks great, and this sticker it's really the only decal. There are also matte black accents on the head tube area, the seat tube and its base, and the ends of the chain stays. There's not much to maintenance on the frame, but for both lights there's access to replace bulbs and to get to the wiring. There's more, but some of it has to be seen in action to be appreciated, but admit it at this point because you've made it this far and you've probably moved into the intrigue stage, or at least for many of you, more so than you would have initially thought. And as I get to the writing, I want to say that even for an adult with three layers of clothing on, this doesn't look any more or less odd than riding a folding bike. One major difference though, this is the lightest e-bike I've encountered. It only weighs 44.4 pounds and that makes it a breeze to move around and even pedal around even without power. Meaning it can be ridden with no assist where it's no more or less harder to propel than a 40 pound big box bike. But with power, it gets up to speed pretty quick and quietly. With the bike being so light, having an aluminum fork and small wheels, I expected the ride to be rough and twitchy, but to an almost unbelievable level, that's not the case. Now it is very responsive, it does have 20 inch wheels, but it's stable enough that I can weave it around one handed even with assist, turning on and off, and even in gravel. Top speed is rated at 18, but I get 15 on flat ground, and at 15 the pedal cadence is practically perfect, meaning it doesn't run out of pedal. Now that's at 15. Downhill I can run it out of pedal, but this isn't for speed, it's a city bike. How about on the e-bike? Tester hill, 36 volt, 250 watts, no problem. In third gear I can effortlessly pedal up at around 7 miles per hour. Red button reveal time plus this. How about cruise control? Hold the throttle for a few seconds and it activates the bike's built-in cruise control, which at first I thought was the throttle hanging, but then I realized it's actually designed with cruise. And another reveal because that's the reason for the power shutoff switches on the brake levers to turn off the cruise. And now the red button, it's not a defective horn, it disables the throttle, which after having it, I would like to see on every throttle equipped bike. So yeah, cruise control, which fits a city bike perfectly if you think about it, point A to B bike lane commuting made easier. So you see why I'm so impressed, because this is not bad at all, and this look has grown on me and others haven't ridiculed it, some have called it cute. Now it's not for everyone or for every situation, but it's definitely a viable city bike. I tested it everywhere I could think. I checked it on the bike racks on campus where it fit perfectly and it's light enough that if I lived in a downtown apartment upstairs it would be easy to carry up and it would help avoid downtown parking fees. And of course with that cruise control as I've already mentioned effortless commuting. One note this was a quicker than normal turnaround on the review so it's more a first look review. Everything you've seen was directly out of the box including the battery charge. I never charged it. Had three riding bars when I started out and that got me 13 miles. Earlier today it gave it its first full charge and that was from a drained battery that took 3 hours and 20 minutes. As you've seen, there are some components on this bike you don't see on bikes that cost more, so how much was this? Well, it's $6.99 on the Unero site, but I see they have a 12% off coupon that goes through Christmas Day, possibly why they wanted this video out so fast. That gets the bike barely over $600, and to me, that's appealing considering the features. Brake lights, cruise control, and it's not a lead brick. And how about one more surprise? That keyed battery lock. That allows the battery to be removed so it can be used as a power bank. It just keeps getting better and there may even be features that I just haven't found yet. I'll keep looking and I'll do a follow up video and even more testing to find out what the full range is. One final observation is that earlier I said this could have been an engineer designed bike when they're worried about function more than aesthetic and I think that's exactly what this is because from a ride perspective the geometry it's very rider friendly. Like it was built around that rather than looks though I do like these looks. It may be an ugly duckling to some but I see the swan. I really do like 99.9% .9 of this bike. Really my only dislike the kilometers per hour prefer miles per hour, but everything else being so impressive, I could live with that. So what do you think about not only the features, but the look? And do you like the look? Like I do, and also being honest, were you more impressed at the end than you were at the beginning? I hope so, and I think you probably are, but comment and let me know. 
And also give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you've got that notification bell active. It's the only way to get notified when there are new videos. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.